Let's move on to former President Trump losing another last-ditch effort to delay his upcoming hush money trial. Trump's legal team filed an 11th-hour request to halt the proceedings, arguing that an impartial jury can't be selected because of pretrial publicity. The judge denied Trump's request for a delay without explanation in a one-sentence order yesterday. His team is also pushing to move the case out of Manhattan. Yesterday's ruling does not affect his underlying change of venue motion. Meanwhile, the judge overseeing the hush money case sent a letter to Trump's lawyers and the Manhattan DA's office outlining jury selection. The judge provided attorneys with a list of 42 questions potential jurors will be asked, including whether they have ever attended a Trump rally or if they belong to groups like the Proud Boys or Antifa. Trump's attorneys wanted to ask potential jurors whether they like the former president, but the judge called that question irrelevant. But potential jurors will be asked about media consumption and whether they read the New York Times, watch Fox News, or use Truth Social. The questionnaire does not ask about party affiliation, political contributions, or voting history. In the federal election interference case, special counsel Jack Smith is urging the Supreme Court to reject former President Trump's claim that he should be granted absolute immunity. In a 66-page filing yesterday, Smith and his team of prosecutors argued that criminal law does apply to a president and that there are no presidential powers that would entitle Trump to immunity in this case. Prosecutors also stated that, quote, history likewise refutes Trump's arguments, citing President Richard Nixon's Watergate scandal as a precedent. Trump's team made a case for absolute immunity in a filing last month to the high court, stating the presidency cannot retain its, quote, vital independence if a president can face criminal prosecution after leaving office. And more than a dozen former top defense officials have filed a brief to the U.S. Supreme Court opposing Trump's push for immunity from prosecution. The 38-page amicus brief includes officials from both Democratic and Republican administrations dating back more than 50 years, as well as retired four-star generals from all branches of the military and admirals from the U.S. Coast Guard. In the brief, the former leaders warned, quote, presidential immunity from criminal prosecution would threaten the military's role in American society, our nation's constitutional order, and our national security. They also argue presidential immunity poses a threat to democracy and would place commanders and their troops in the impossible situation of having to choose between obeying a commander in chief, giving an unlawful order, or obeying their oath to the Constitution. The Supreme Court is set to hear oral arguments about Trump's immunity argument on April 25th. We'll be watching for that. So, Willie, a lot going on, but it appears, at least for now, that uh, Trump's hush money trial is on schedule. Yeah, that was slapped down pretty quickly. That is a lot to get through. Luckily, we have help. <laughs> former litigator and MSNBC yes. legal correspondent Lisa Rubin is here, along with former U.S. attorney and MSNBC contributor Chuck Rosenberg. Guys, good morning. Good to see you both. Uh, so there's a lot there. Let's start at the beginning. We'll take these in order as Mika went through them. Uh, start with the, um, the bid, the Trump team's bid to delay this trial, which has been the strategy across the board. Just kick it down the road, delay, delay, delay. This one, though, slapped aside by the appellate justice very quickly. Part of it. So Trump yesterday made some filings with an appeals court in New York asking to delay the trial on two grounds. One, because the venue, meaning where the trial is situated here in Manhattan, they say is inappropriate because President Trump can't get a fair trial. 
That was denied yesterday. The court said, we will not stay the trial while we consider your change of venue motion. This morning, however, Willie, that court is going to reconvene to hear the second part, which is Trump's appeal of the gag order in that case. Right. It's still unclear because the papers are not publicly accessible whether he is also asking to stay the trial while an appeals court considers whether Judge Mershon's gag order is constitutional and lawful. If he has asked for a stay of trial, look today to see whether we get a similarly quick ruling. So this is, if everyone's trying to keep it straight, this is the hush money trial, yep. Stormy Daniels, that's the shorthand for it. So the hush, the, the gag order, um, he's, I guess we can use whatever standard we want to use, but Donald Trump continues to talk about the trial, talking about the judge himself. And he's allowed to do and that. And he's allowed to do that, right? Under the terms of the gag order, he is allowed to do that as odious and as maybe justice defeating as some of us might think that is, he is allowed to do that. He is not violating the terms of the gag order. One could argue that he might be violating its spirit. So, Chuck, let's talk about the jury selection process. Mm -hmm. It's set up for Monday, believed to be scheduled. You know, what Mika just read in terms of the things that are going to be out of bounds or being asked about, does it feel right to you? It does, uh, Jonathan. Look. I can simplify this a bit. What the judge is trying to do is find a jury that can be fair. You can watch Fox News and be fair. You could watch MSNBC and be fair. Right? You can vote one way or the other and be fair. You, can, you have a lot of people who live in this city and a lot of people who are eligible to serve as jurors. You need 12 people who could be fair. And so the uh, questionnaire is designed exactly to do that. Can you sit? Can you listen? Do you have other responsibilities that may distract you or require you to do other things? If you can sit, if you can listen, if you can pay attention, can you be fair? So, Chuck, just bottom lining this, and before we move on to the, um, the next case, does any of this appear to threaten to hold up this trial in a significant way? Uh, a little bit yes and a little bit no. You know, Lisa and I were talking uh, right before we started here, Willie, and it's interesting. My experience as a federal prosecutor in the Eastern District of Virginia, 50 or 60 trials, it never took me more than 45 minutes to pick a jury. Mm. So different judges in different courts do things in different ways. And we didn't use questionnaires. It would be extraordinarily unusual for that to happen in our federal court. Here, however, uh, it tends to be the practice, so it takes longer, right, to get through 42 questions with however many people are on the uh, panel. Um, could take a, you know, a week or two, but this is not an overly complex process. It's going to be managed by the judge, and they're going to get through it, and they're going to see the jury, and the trial is going to begin. So whether it's a few days or a couple of weeks, it shouldn't be an enormous delay. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.